What's up guys, Justin here with the Fusion Essentials. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how you can use joints in order to set the relationship between different objects to create moving objects in Fusion 360. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so joints are basically a way to set the position of objects relative to other objects inside of Fusion 360. And so we're gonna use this very simple example. There are a number of different kinds of joints in Fusion 360. And so if you look at this object right now, I've basically created three parts in here, right? I've got a body that makes up the pin between these two objects, I've got a base, and I've got the handle. And basically what I want is I wanna make this handle rotate around this joint um, in a way that's actually accurate. Um, you can use this in order to simulate the way objects are going to move, other things like that. And so in this case, the first thing that you need to know is in order to add joints to objects, your objects actually need to be components, not bodies. And so you can create co components whenever you're modeling objects. So like for example, say that I was just to draw a simple rectangle right here and extrude it to 3D like this. Notice how you have an option in here to create that new object as a body or a component. All right, so if we were to select the option for new component rather than a body, and then we look over here, notice how while your bodies are up in the bodies folder, and they show up as kind of individual parts, the component is over here and it contains a different set of information. So this set of information does contain the body that we've created, but it also contains an object origin. And it's basically going to be important if you are trying to dictate um, motion of objects relative to other objects. I believe other things get stored in the components as well. One powerful thing about components is you can save them and insert them into other files as well. So um, in this situation, we're gonna take these objects and I'm gonna go ahead and delete this one and I'm going to convert them to components. And so the way that we can do that is we can start by selecting an object. So in this case, I'm gonna select my handle. And what I wanna do is I wanna go up to the assemble function right here and notice how there's an option for a new component. And so when I do this, this is going to tell me or let me select if it's standard or sheet metal. In this case, it's standard. Um, it's going to let us set if this is going to be external, meaning it's going to be created elsewhere and then referenced into the design or created internally. For this video, I just want this to be internal. I'm not worried about referencing it to other files. And in this case, we have a box that's checked for from bodies. So if we don't have the box that's checked for from bodies, it's just gonna kind of select everything in here, which is not what we want. So we wanna check the box for from bodies, and we wanna select this object right here. Then we're gonna click on okay. And so notice what that did is that took that body, which was up here, and it made it into a component. Now, let's take this, right click on it, and let's rename it. So we're gonna go to rename, and we're gonna call this handle. That way we can see what it is when we're looking over here on the screen. And I'm gonna do the same thing with my base plate. So I'm just gonna take this base plate, make it a new component, and we're gonna click on okay. And in this case, we're gonna right click and we're gonna rename this base. I'm not really gonna worry about the pin for right now. Um, you definitely could make that pin a part of this assembly, but really for now, I just want this to kind of like slide along in this direction. So it's not really that big of a deal. So now what we have is we have two components that are in here, a handle and a base. And what I need to do is I need to use the assemble function and specifically the option for joint right here in order to take those objects and create a joint between them. So I'm gonna click on the option for joint and that's gonna ask me to define two components. And remember that when you define a component, what this is gonna do is this is basically going to set a point in your 3D space that these two objects are going to reference. And so in this case, I'm just going to mouse over this object and I'm gonna find this edge of this object right here. And this is probably the trickiest thing about creating components is getting, or creating joints, is getting these objects to have that same base point. Um, for whatever reason, I just, I have a really hard time getting them to kind of like inference together but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select this edge right here. And notice what that did is that created a joint, but that joint is kind of like off 
by a little bit. And so what I wanna do is I just wanna move this back until it aligns right here. So I just moved this back by 0 0.10 right here. And so what this did is this basically created a joint or a link between these two different objects right here. And so the first thing that I noticed when we did this is we actually set the wrong object as the first component. And so now let's jump over into the second tab, which is the motion. And that's where we're going to dictate the motion of the object. And the first thing you're gonna notice right here is the wrong object is moving because I basically selected these in the wrong order. So what I want is I don't want the handle to be the second component, I want the handle to be the first component. So I'm just going to start again. I'm going to select the snap for my handle object. And I'll select something on the actual handle object itself like this. But then for our second object, we'll set our base. And so notice how now the handle is the object that's moving. And I'm just gonna move this back by a 10th right here so it's in the correct location. So we're basically setting the alignment of the object, but then I wanna jump over into the motion settings. And so there's a bunch of different kinds of joints that you can add. And I'll link to a playlist down below talking more about the different joints. But in this situation, notice how I can set a rigid joint meaning the object won't move. I can set a revolute joint, which is going to revolve around that point that we set, um, as well as a number of others, like a slider, which lets, you slit, sit, which lets you set a slider in a direction. There's the pin slot, which allows you to actually move an object and have it turn at the same time. That one's helpful for if you wanna do like screws or bolts on threads, um, other things like that. So there's a number of different joints in here, but in this case, we want the revolute right here. And so now we're gonna click on OK. And so what we've done is we've created a joint in here. But the problem is if I click and drag on this, notice how everything moves around. And so the problem with everything moving around, obviously, is this joint isn't really giving us the simulation that we want. So I'm gonna do a Control Z to undo that. Well, there's another step that we need to take here in order to make this work. And that is we want us to tell it that this base plate should not move. And so in this situation, to say that the base plate isn't going to move, we're gonna go over to the base right here. We're gonna right click on it and we're gonna click on the option for ground. So when we click on the option for ground, what that's gonna do is that's going to pin the object in place so that it no longer moves. So now if I mouse over this object, notice how when I click and drag it, it's going to rotate in whatever direction I drag like this and the base is staying in place. So now we have an actual joint that's working the way that it should. But we have a problem. And the problem is when I drag this joint right here, it goes too far. So if I click and drag like this, notice how it'll go through the ground. Well, I'm gonna do a control Z right here, and I'm going to take this joint and I'm going to set a limit. And so to set a limit, what I can do is I can go find my joint over here, that's gonna be this one. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna click on edit motion limits. Okay, and so if I check the box right here for minimum and maximum, notice what this is going to do is it's going to let me set a minimum and maximum joint direction just by dragging this. And so notice how if I drag this to negative 90 degrees right here, that's going to set that value to be negative 90 degrees. And then I can click and drag this other one, which is setting the other direction to be 90 degrees. So now I've told this my minimum is negative 90, my maximum is 90. And if I click on this button right here for preview limits, this is gonna show me what my limits are in this scene, like this. So if I click on okay, what that's gonna do is that's gonna place this object right here. And note that you can set the rest as well. So in my motion limits, if I wanna set the rest position, I can set it so that rest position might be right here, right here. That just means that what, whenever we default this back, it's going to default to whatever limit or whatever uh, value we place in here. So now, if I click and drag like this, my joint is set where I've got an accurately simulated object moving inside of Fusion 360, like this. And so if you want to view this joint, 
um, without you having to move it, you can right click on this and there's an option here for animate joint. And so what that's going to do is that's going to just simulate the movement back and forth until you tell it to stop. And you can tap the inner key um, in order to stop that movement inside of your 3D space. All right, so that's how you can create joints in Fusion 360. I will link to a playlist, which I think I'm gonna be updating. Um, so stay tuned for that, but it's gonna teach you how to create the different kinds of joints in Fusion. Leave a comment below, let me know if you have any questions about these relationships. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.